he was your local Jack the Ripper. He didn't. He's not known to kill other people, but he was a myth. He skipped town. He skipped out. Here's a man who, since uh, the time that he fled, he has never held a job. And he's fled uh, to various countries all over Europe using planes, trains, and other methods of transportation. He has a magnificent house in the Bordeaux region of France, which is not, you know, an inconsiderable expense. I believe that uh, he knew that if he was brought back, he was going to spend the rest of his life in jail. And that's what needed to happen. So well, it was a shockwave here because it, Time had sort of forgotten him and put him aside with all the other things going on. So when it, it just, the story just exploded. This is 3411 Ray Street. This is the same building that Ira Einhorn lived in with Holly Maddox. A lot of students that live on this block now, many of them are completely unaware that one of the most notorious murders in the city of Philadelphia happened right here. Ira Einhorn was this iconic hippie, this Greenwich Village hippie in Philadelphia, which had very few other high profile people uh, of Ira's stature and of Ira's intellect. I first became aware of Ira probably in 1973 or 74. I was involved in politics, but I worked for a civic organization. And the head of the civic organization brought Ira in to talk because Ira had charisma and shtick. And people were, he was magnetic in his personality. People uh, began to take Ira seriously when establishment folks invited him to speak at events or at meetings to, to explain you know, what was happening over here. How, how could we think about the future in a way that was different? Obviously, environmentally, Ira was a high profile person. Earth Day, he takes a lot of credit for, whether deservedly, I suspect not. But in the 70s, he, he gained a certain credibility in Philadelphia as a spokesperson for the extreme left. And I don't mean political left, I mean intellectual left. I don't want to say that I, I was a groupie around Ira, because I was not, although I was pretty, you know, I was very left of center. Ira was a flim flam man, he had a good gift of gab, and a certain kinds of people could be quite taken with him and all of his scientific mumbo jumbo, he would talk about this, this and that, and conspiracies and things like that. He had a good line and he had a good rap. I was in the Homicide Division, which would have been in the early parts of 1979. And I get a call to go up to the Commissioner's office. And inside Commissioner O'Neill's office were two members uh, of an investigative team, both of whom were former FBI agents. And apparently they had been hired by family of a Holly Maddox, a woman by the name of Holly Maddox who had gone missing. And they handed me a, an investigation that they had done. And I knew Einhorn from the prior occasions he ran for mayor. So, from a media perspective, he had a, a, an interesting persona. Did the persona that he had in the media reflect who he really was, the man that you no, know? No, no. For want of a better word, he was a dirtball. I met with the uh, two investigators and they gave me their report. But it was very, very well done. It was like a book. 
First thing I said is that Ira Einhorn killed Holly Maddox. And Ira Einhorn probably buried Holly Maddox's body in a closet which was outside his apartment proper. What made you think that? Just reading the book. Just when, when you'd read all the, all the interviews of the people and, and his history, propensity for violence. Uh, when you got done reading the book, it was almost like an Alfred Hitchcock book. I met with all the muckety mucks, I called the medical examiner's office, I did everything and explained what we were trying to do. And basically we went in with the lab, the crime lab. We went in with the um, search to pull all the floorboards down, to rip all the floorboards up, and to see if we could, couldn't find our head air and blood. Because all the information we had that the body decomposed and, and the, body went, the, the fluids went down the wall through the floorboards. We went in and eventually we searched the house. And it's a very, very small apartment. All types of books. Einhorn was a slob. He was dirty. He was, he was just a slob. We were focusing on an outside closet. First thing I noticed, the, the padlock, the door's padlocked. And I asked him, did he have the keys? He said, no, he didn't have the keys. <clears throat> so I got a crow, crowbar and gently removed the, the, the hasp and the lock. One of the boxes uh, had on there Maddox, and then there was a, a handbag, and in the handbag was her identification, her library card, stuff that you just would not leave behind if you were going to run away. So we started searching, <coughs> and the closet itself, you could smell. So in fact, when you first opened up the door, you can smell decomposition of a body. The steamer trunk was laying on some type of rug. I went down through and then the next thing I noticed there were plastic bags from Sears. Underneath the plastic bags was foam. So I started gently moving the foam aside and I saw a hand sticking out. What you could see was a, a flannel shirt. I turned to Ira and Einhorn who was standing at the door. I said, looks like we found Holly. And he said to me, you found whatever you found. You found what you found. I think at that moment he realized he was done until, uh, until he got out on bail. Ira got his bail cut down. First degree murder, it's hard to get, it's hard to get bail on that one. You know, O.J. Simpson didn't even get bail for first degree murder charges. People blasted him about it, but I, Arlen was doing his job. Arlen, Arlen was in private practice as a lawyer, and he went in there and advocated for his client. I can remember saying it to the DA, he's gone. And he served the subpoena, wasn't there. And then we went over to the location and saw that everything was gone. Then we did an investigation, said he was with a woman. He left with the woman. Can you describe the woman? Well, the description was Holly Maddox to a T. But it wasn't Holly Maddox, but it was another woman that he hooked up with. And uh, apparently he went to Europe. Rob tells the story of one of the most wanted men in the history of Philadelphia crime. His name, Ira Einhorn. At that point, nobody knew where Ira was, but he you know, lived under various uh, aliases and things like that. And uh, while he was distinctive looking, he wasn't somebody who didn't look like they could have been born in, in Europe or Ireland or someplace like that. So he wasn't, uh, and he wasn't a terrorist, he was a murder suspect, domestic murder. I was the one who coined the phrase, uh, Lynn Abraham is very much a lady in waiting, waiting for her to get her hands around Iris' neck, you know. I think we've proven that Einhorn uh, murdered Holly Maddox in that apartment, put her body in a trunk, and kept it there for a year and a half until the police came in there and discovered it. 
it was a bizarre scene. There was an empty chair there for the defendant. They had a defense, two defense lawyers there. They brought in people to testify and that Iowa was in flight and that obviously that showed a uh, consciousness of guilt and things like that. He skipped town. It's fait accompli that he was going to be convicted. The detectives spoke to some first floor residents of this building. I'm absolutely 100% sure. That he did it? Absolutely. Alive. Alive and well. And creating a disturbance. Long after she was allegedly murdered. Months. Now, and I'm not going to say long, but I'm going to say months. As for the missing defendant, Ira Einhorn, if he is found guilty of murder, both the prosecutor and his defense attorney say that will mean absolutely nothing until he is located apprehended and brought back to Philadelphia. For all the people who helped Ira Einhorn in his escape, I hope this verdict weighs heavy on their conscience. Then one day he pops up captured. It was shocking. I mean, it was like a uh, you know, legend coming coming out of nowhere. I mean, he was, uh, he'd become a legend because a lot of people knew him. And it, it was a shock that suddenly the French police had arrested Ira Einhorn and found him living like a country squire in the French countryside, living large, so to speak. And uh, man, by that time, Lynn Abraham was the DA. And uh, man, she said, man, we're bringing Ira back here to stand trial. I don't care who he is or how connected he is. I have never ever been able to relate to Ira as the accused murderer. It's something that is there, I know it, but it's in the outside world. We've been together almost constantly for 14 years, 24 hours a day. He has a rich wife. How rich is she? Well, I, I've never counted her money, but I understand that the Flodden family apparently has uh, some means uh, of considerable amounts. What would you say to the Maddox family? Is there anything you would say to the Maddox family? The Philadelphia District Attorney is researching the possibility of a new trial if that is what it takes to pry Einhorn loose from the French. The day he was being locked up, I was on the phone with his lawyer here, the new lawyer he had. The wires were breaking. Said, Einhorn just slashed his throat. The police are outside his door. They were waiting to lock him up and take him away. All of his appeals were, were done, kaput. I am innocent. I want a fair trial. I will be happy to go to the United States if a court gives me a new trial. Well, I'm cautiously optimistic that it'll, that it'll be brought back, but I'm also told that he attempted to kill himself today, which I think is a, is a, is a ruse to stay in France so he doesn't have to come back and face American justice. I mean, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. He thought that the CIA had killed Holly and set him up because he was aware of all these strange conspiracies going on. He was just very arrogant and said, I convened a conference of scientists. It was all a fraud. The DA was just nailing it. I think he's putting on a show for the jury to show, oh, look at me, I'm intellectually analyzing this right. data. I need to see how someone is really trying to frame me so I can say, oh, yes, that's a CIA tactic. It was just a wild, wild scene. The family was up there, and they'd go on TV every night and give their own commentary. I was a lawyer would come out and try to talk about it. At least to the theory that she did not decompose within the trunk. She was killed elsewhere, and her body was placed into that trunk 
not long before she was discovered there in March of 1979. Well, we've talked about that stench before. People all over the apartment building were complaining. Ira was one of those people. We had testimony yesterday from the owner that they had to deal with a problem of dead squirrels in the roof. Paul Harry, a former downstairs neighbor of Ira Einhorn's, told the jury that sometime in the fall of 1977, he heard the sounds of domestic violence coming from the apartment above, but he never called police. Harry told the jury that late in September, he started smelling a persistent foul odor coming from Einhorn's apartment and a foul rancid oozing he had to clean away. Einhorn, according to a former South Street book dealer, came looking for a how-to book on making mummies in the months before his arrest in the Maddox murder case. Cindy Grady told the jury Einhorn asked her to help him throw the steamer trunk into the Schoolkill River, telling her the KGB was out to get him because the trunk contained information on Russian psychic warfare. Boom, we got the jury couldn't, uh, deliberated only about three hours or maybe less. They came back and gave him murder one again. I never wanted him to um, be executed. I would prefer he live a long life and uh, then get a lingering illness. Holly and our parents can now truly rest. I felt just so profound sadness when that verdict came down. Some of the evidence that was presented is devastating, but still, the actual proof and all these indications that, that there are doubts, uh, they remain with me. She never came to America to visit him because the land said, she shows up here, I'm going to lock her up too. since that's uh, that's where Holly's body was kept after she was murdered there's kind of there's a there's a weird feeling in that closet I ignore it I choose to ignore it and move throughout my day I always thought that his whole thing was an act, that he was in his own movie, and that he was the lead character. And that movie was always entertaining until it stopped being entertaining, and it started to be terrible. And I think once we found out that uh, his girlfriend had been stuffed into a trunk and kept there for more than a, almost a year and a half, there's an evilness there that supersedes any good or creativity that you might have been able to impart. There's good in all of us, but when the bad is that overwhelming, it's hard to think of a person in any other way.